So, so here we are in this scenario where we're all caught in this idea that we are our beliefs, which is so not true. The idea that a belief is limiting is the limiting factor, period. This is Super Fast Business with James Schramko. James Schramko. Helping you build your business super fast. 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 James Schramko here. Welcome to superfastbusiness.com. Today I'm speaking with Seth Ellsworth and we will be talking about your belief system and we'll see if we can make some connection as to how that's getting you the results that you're getting. So welcome to the call, Seth. Thank you, James. Seth. Stoked to be here. It's lovely to have you here. I've met you in Santa Barbara at the right. Entreport event. You are remarkably tall. That's probably why your website is 610seth.com. You got to say it right, man. You got to say it right. 610, baby. Well, you see, as a domainer, I do struggle with that domain because it's, is it S-I-X-T-E-N? Is it 6-T-E-N? Is it S-I-X-1-0? However, I bought both versions to make it yeah, easy. Yeah, you, you know, basically you're committing yourself to multiple purchases with a domain like that. But 610seth.com, how about that? There it is. <laughs> and I like that your point of differentiation is hard to replicate. Yeah. There's a significant barrier to entry. That's my one shining trait, so i got to milk it. I think you've got more traits than that. We're going to be talking about one of them today. <laughs> you've got a bug in your bonnet about limiting beliefs and the, the limitations of limiting beliefs. Um, can we talk about this topic? I will try to keep it civil and not rant too much. I don't mind if you rant. I, I think firstly, let's let's talk about why you're interested in this topic in the first place. Why should I be interested? Why should a listener be interested in understanding limiting beliefs? Well, first reason for me is that I care. I flat out care that people actually get results and move forward in life. And because I know how bad it hurts, especially as entrepreneurs, when we feel stuck stuck or stopped or that we're not getting traction, we're not moving forward. And a lot of times limiting belief comes up as a thing that we blame for it. And so I deal with this a lot with my clients and it's something that is, it's, it's pervasive. I think it's actually an addiction, which we'll talk about. Well, let's clarify then. What are we talking about specifically when we say limiting beliefs? We should just put a, a border around this and say this is what we're talking about. So limiting belief in the context that when, once you come up against something that is we would label as resistance, we immediately say that's, that's a limiting belief. And so we, we're now looking laterally to try and find the answer for it. So something that comes in your way, you don't quite know what it is, you feel like it's a blind spot, you feel like it's a block, something in your mindset, in your belief system that you can't label, we lump it into the bin of it's a limiting belief. So an example, if we were a copywriter, then we might say we have writer's block. Correct. Okay, I can relate to that. There's, there's, something, there's something blocking them. You can go to limiting beliefs to the depth that I'm scarce-minded, the world is scarce, there's not enough for me, I'm not successful, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not good enough, all that kind of stuff in the same bin. I feel a lot of those things are programmed into us, mostly by our parents and our environment as we grow up. You know, um, don't ask why, or mm -hmm. we can't afford that. Or, and I'm, I'm not specifically talking about my mum and dad. So mum, dad, not talking about you. I'm talking about regular parents who, <laughs> in, you know, they just parlay their thoughts and ideas onto the next generation. And that's why we get such a big lottery lineup sure. when there's a huge payout because – People have limited the idea that they can achieve what they want through ordinary means, so they need to have the extraordinary lottery win is their strategy for wealth. And I I've almost feel a little bit sorry for those people because to me, that's an indicator. That would be the litmus test of saying, hey, you have limited your thoughts about what you can do without winning the lottery. Am I on the right track here? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's, it's completely limiting. So let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. There was this, this poor gal in this online mastermind group that threw up a post. She says, I feel really stuck. I think I've got these limiting beliefs. How do you guys deal with limiting beliefs? Boom, 300 comments. So that's an assumption that there is limiting beliefs in the very first place. That's right. That's right. And limiting beliefs, call them what they are, they do exist, and they're a very real thing. But we give them too much airplay. 
We give them mm-hmm. too much play in our mind. So she, and bless her heart, she was super well-meaning and she feels really stuck. But she was then littered with 117 different ways to get rid of her limiting beliefs. So going from somebody that feels overwhelmed and stuck, giving them 117 different ways to fix it, what does that fix? Absolutely nothing. So she feels more stuck and more, more worthless when really the problem isn't her limiting beliefs at all. It has nothing to do with that. So there's an entire industry built around limiting beliefs. And if that's your industry, this may be offensive for you where I go with this. And I'm fine with that because we need to rewrite the friggin' script right now. Because everyone is yeah. stuck. If you think that your beliefs are limiting you, you got problems. You know why? Because your limiting beliefs are actually the symptom, the symptom, not the cause. So if you ever label a limiting belief as the cause for anything, you got problems. And you will never be to the end of that problem so long as you don't realize that it was a choice that got you there in the first place. So is this about looking in the mirror and taking responsibility? Yeah, but it goes deep, a little bit deeper than that. Let's go, let's go a bit deeper. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious now. What are the causes? So we got to look at what causes belief. And everybody think that you've got actions, you've got beliefs, and how they're intertwined, et cetera. No, it goes deeper than that. It goes, goes to an identity level. The most powerful force in the entire universe is a human being trying to remain consistent with who they see themselves as, period. That right there is enough to create powers that change the world but it's also enough to destroy you. So if how you see yourself is a poor person, you'll be a poor person. If how you see yourself is somebody that wakes up in the morning and rocks their morning routine, that's what you'll do. Your body, your mind, everything that we are given by the higher power is to help us stay in alignment with who we are. So here's the thing. The limiting beliefs are a result of how we see ourselves. It's not the other way around. Your beliefs don't create who you are. So you go one layer deeper. All you're going to find, James, is choices. That's all you are is a pile of choices in your life. That's it. There's nothing else. The only thing unique that you have to give to the world is the choices you make right now. So here's where I go with this when I talk with clients about this very issue, and it shatters their entire paradigm of what they thought they were. And it's so powerful, but so stupid simple, anybody can understand this. What creates beliefs? What creates identity? It's choices. So go with me on this. Everything that you believe you are, or if you feel, or that your paradigm for existing, all your beliefs, whether they're limiting or not, they originated in choice. Whether that's your choice, or the choice of your parents, or your friends, or your cousins that shaped you, you got two things. You either choose to believe it, or not. You either give up your choices or you make one. Either one of those is a choice. So everything that you have created, that you feel you are, that you've been through, has caused you to make a choice on some level. And that choice becomes the seed for how you see yourself. You see the relation there? I do. It it, um, does fit with some of the things that I've been exposed to in the past. I remember Maxwell Maltz talking about humans being a goal-seeking machine. And that fits quite nicely with what you're saying, that we keep tuning ourselves to be the person we see ourselves as. And I remember Brian Tracy, sales training, psychology of selling, was saying, uh, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And and that's something that I teach my kids. And that certainly implies the self-choice, that we can choose to make something Mm -hmm. happen. Absolutely, in any moment. And what we have chosen has created us to this point. I love the believe it or not part because that's where it fits so beautifully with my concept of questioning everything, question everything, because we're fed stuff. Um, If you see documentaries or you observe any religion, you see entire masses devoted to a belief system that in many cases has never been questioned or challenged it's just accepted and and brought in without any filter and i remember one mentor of mine was teaching me about how to read books properly and he said just keep in mind that a book is generally one person's opinion 
So it doesn't mean you have to agree with it or that just because he wrote a book that he's the supreme authority on it. You could find 10 books with 10 different opinions on a similar topic. It's up to us to decide which ones we accept and which ones we reject. Even this very podcast, someone could listen to this and choose to accept your concept or reject it. And that's the fascinating thing about this. It is a very deep subject. But it's also extremely simple. If we decide that it's uh, choices, it's it's the choices we've made and choices that others have made on our behalf. I can't, can't help but think of like a Coca-Cola billboard or a McDonald's advertisement on TV. That's like someone's <laughs> telling us what choice to make, whether we accept or reject that. Knowing this, what's the next situation that we should be talking about so here it is in, in in life like this poor gal in this group online she posted this she's not aware of her choices that's her problem it's not that she has limiting beliefs she feels stuck because she doesn't see options she doesn't see her choices so here's how simple it gets you go to the the only thing that you have control over in this life is choices that's your point of creation always From there, you choose who you are and who you're going to be. This is so powerful. I can't, it is difficult to describe how powerful this is when the light bulb goes on in somebody's life and they actually apply this. When you make a choice on an identity level, that becomes a superhuman power that you didn't even know existed. Why? Because your identity holds the ticket for all of your thoughts all of your beliefs, and therefore the resultant actions. So are you talking about self-belief here? Absolutely. Not just yep. belief, self-identity. Self-identity. It's yep. deeper than belief. Belief is a symptom or a result of? Of choices. Of choices. So we go from choice to identity, which then begets the thoughts, beliefs, and actions. So this person that was stuck... If she really wanted to change her life, she would go to the core choice to change who she sees herself as. Here's the magic. When you go there, James, which, by the way, freaks out the normal human because it's somewhere they've never been and they've never gone before because they didn't realize that was available to them to Mm -hmm. go there. But you go there and you literally stare yourself in the mirror and realize that you're not looking at yourself, that there's somebody deeper and more powerful that you would not even awakened yet in your life. And he has the ability to make choices on a level that you didn't even understand. You can choose to be right now. And the result of this, James, is that it doesn't freaking matter what the 15,798 limiting beliefs are that you have. Because as soon as you change the identity, what must change? The resultant forces, which are your thoughts, your beliefs, and your actions. Because we've got that thing that the human beings have, which is the strongest force in the universe, which is we want to maintain a steady course in alignment with how we see ourselves. So you change how you see yourself, you change everything else. Period. Yeah, this is good. I really like the progression there. Choice to identity, thoughts, beliefs, actions, and I imagine after that comes results. Absolutely. So I've got an entire podcast on this very subject of thoughts, actions, and results. It's called Think, Act, Get. And it goes way back to – I registered that, that domain uh, a long time ago when I f- almost – a good one. Yeah, when I first started online. It's catch. And it was because I'd learned about ABC, Activator Behavior Consequence. And what you've done is take mm-hmm. us a step before the activator – and that is the um, the choice part and the identity part. I really like that. And I was only recently revealing a story to my listeners about when I attended a personal development workshop at uh, the workplace that we had. And there was this mechanic and he was almost at retirement age and he just had this epiphany and broke down into tears just because he actually never realized – that he had a choice. All he did was go to school, then do an apprentice mechanic job and then become a mechanic and then become a senior mechanic for his entire life and he's almost at retirement and he never realized that he could have chosen 
something else. Never, never gave it a, a single thought. So it's, you know, that was the most profound thing I've seen as awakening to say, you know what, if you want something different, it's, it's possible. You've just got to, you've got to, to think that. You've got to make the choices. And everything we have right now is the result of all the choices that have come before right. us, right? That's right. And there's different levels of choices. The, the, the kind of choices I'm talking about are the ones that create turning points, the massive choices. Those are available to you anytime you want them. You don't have to be the Michael Jordan who's cut from their sophomore basketball team to figure out that you want to be a basketball player. You don't got to be the Charles Barkley that didn't graduate with his high school class and went under the stands and cried to take control of your life and say that you're not ever going to ever going to leave your destiny in the hands of somebody else. You can make those choices anytime you want. I mean, it, you read biographies. Almost every biography you read, there's always a massive turning point where something just radically changes for that person. Yes, and I watch documentaries all the time and and it, it's fascinating. It's almost always a choice. That's it. That's the crux of it. Even sometimes they explain it as being it just happened or it's serendipitous. Mm -hmm. But even then, you're still at a crossroads to embrace it or reject it. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's interesting the result that this has once people believe that they can choose on a different level. It, it breaks them wide open. And this, the, the trend of limiting beliefs, obviously they exist, they're there, and when you clear them out, it just feels better. But here's, here's the best analogy I've ever heard about this issue. So if I'm cleaning my house and there's cobwebs in the top right corner by the door. I'm not going to feel like my house is clean until those cobwebs are washed out, washed away. So the cleaning lady can come in, and she can clean out the cobwebs. But if she doesn't kill the spider, you haven't fixed the problem. Well, she shouldn't kill the spider just quietly. Not quietly. Well, no. She's just smash. No, the cobwebs get all the insects and mosquitoes. They're your friends. Spiders are great. See, now you're, now you're doing your contrarian thinking here. <laughs> well, I'm looking at some cobwebs right now on my balcony, and they're the, that's the net trapping the mosquitoes in summer that stop me getting stung. So you've got bug problems in your, in your world. So the analogy... Well, no, it's, it's just in Australia. We, you know, we live amongst them, so it's an interesting For sure. metaphor. But isn't it a good example? So if you don't want cobwebs... But isn't it an example? We can make a choice. You see a cobweb and I see a cobweb. Your choice will be to annihilate the root cause, and my choice will be to embrace the natural insect killer. Yep. And uh, and so we've both made a different choice around the same item and we both get a different result. 100%. I have to look at cobwebs. However, my body's safe from nasties. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So so the, the obviously the idea is there, you can clean out the cobwebs, but they'll come back if you don't kill the spider. Exactly. If we want to put into a metaphor that everyone can relate to is your inbox. You can clear out your inbox, but sure enough, it'll be full again next week unless you go back to the real reason, which is the fact that you signed on to everyone's email list in the first place. Your habit of acquiring is going to cause a deluge in your inbox. And only when you stop turning on subscriptions will you stop the influx. And you know what? Those, those emails are just like limiting beliefs. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. There's so many of them. It's just overwhelming. There's just so many, and they keep coming back. Oh, my, there's so many. I don't know how to stop it. Your inbox, it's the to-do list that other people get to add to. In other words, you made a choice to let other people choose to tell you what to do or to tell you what action to take. And only when you make a choice to reject giving them the choice – do you free yourself up from that? In fact, we know several people who don't use email at all. They chose not to bother with email and they've had other people manage it or they just don't deal with it. They don't reply. In fact, those people you know not to ever email because they're not going to reply back. So they've actually created a self-fulfilling prophecy with their choice. Talking about the Dan Kennedys of the world. Dan Kennedy, yeah, he's a classic, still yep. uses yep. faxes. I don't even have a fax machine. I have to do that digitally too. <laughs> Who has a fax you, machine? You have, to, you have to have an email address to use a fax machine. Right. It's just silly. So, so here we are in this scenario where we're all caught in this idea that we are our beliefs, which is so not true. 
the idea that a belief is limiting is the limiting factor, period. If you believe it's limiting, it will be. And so your mindset on that issue, you're stuck looking at a symptom and thinking that that symptom is you. It's got nothing to do with you. It's not really who you are. You are a thinking, warm-blooded human being that has the ability to choose. And you command those beliefs by who you see yourself as. It's incredibly powerful and it's incredibly limiting. So what kind of stuff does this do in people's life? Well, it does. It creates miracles. I don't, really, I don't really know another word to describe the stupid, crazy stuff that happens when people figure out that they can change who they are by just a simple choice. You get habits that people have struggled with their whole lives installed like software. It's the craziest thing ever. Happened to me. You get things that people struggle with in their mindset where they're not believing they're good enough. All of a sudden, they're, they've turned professional. They've turned pro in their mind, to use a Stephen Pressfield phrase. And now they're professional. I got one story that's just amazing. This kid who's never been in a... Can you rewind? This is great for the listeners. If you rewind to where you tip the scale from an employee to an entrepreneur, I know some of you probably just grew up in entrepreneurs, but a lot of us made the transition. I know you used to work for Mercedes-Benz dealership. There's a transition period where you've got to level up your mindset to turn professional in order to be worth anything in the, in the free market. Absolutely. Imagine rewinding to that mode, jumping into the entrepreneurial world and not being sure of yourself, not being sure of your business, not being sure of your value. I had a client one time who was four months into that scenario. He was just working a job previous four months, but bless his heart, he worked like a champ and he was already making two or three thousand dollars a month on month four, which that's pretty good. He's going fast. So he does an American Express gamble and hires me to teach him with the mindset issues that he had. Month two, he 10 x his income. Didn't change anything in his business, nothing in his business. 10 x his income. All because he changed who he is. Yep, that's it. Shocking. Change nothing in your business and everything changes. That's the kind of choices I'm talking about. That's not a one-time occurrence. Well, I, uh, you, you asked me to rewind and I had that exact experience. For me, it was benchmarking was one way that I was able to make different choices. It was sitting beside people who were achieving significantly better results than what I was, which made me reappraise what standard I accept for myself. So it was a choice to no longer accept. Like I went from a point where I was earning $300,000 per year, sitting next to people making $100,000 per month and then reappraising my scenario and and you'd call it a reframe in some contexts where I went from thinking I was doing okay to thinking that I was playing too small a game and ripping myself off and a decade later uh, generating several million dollars per year, my new standard is you know the, the bare minimum compared to other people's maximum it's wildly different i can feel it when i'm circulating society i'm living a very different life than most of the people around me but with the same resources and, and tools available in fact the main resource that we all have available to us is 24 hours a day and everything else is up to 100%. you you said something that's really important is that you chose a standard so there's different types of choices one could be you choose or you refuse, you make a choice to refuse to accept X, Y, Z. You level your own playing field to whatever level you want to play at. The other type of choice is where you choose to be something that is at a higher level. Two different choices, both of those together are incredibly powerful and you're, you're perfect. So that's choice stacking. That's right. You're a perfect example of that. I think one uh, articulation that's worth mentioning is that when I'm aware of something... I usually work hard on crafting the right question to move myself out of it. Mm -hmm. And I guess question must be in some way related to a choice. By choosing a good question, I can develop a better answer or, you know, prescription. And the answer itself is it can be a choice. Yeah. I think a lot of people are answering a question that's the wrong question in life. Like they, they revolve their whole existence around money, for example. So they've made a choice to make money the center of the universe when I've discovered that that's not the center of the universe for me, 
So I've chosen a different importance, a different factor to place value on, which re- means that my entire universe is spinning at a different speed than other people. With you know, and every possible choice along the way, when you use a filter, one filter could be money, another filter could be happiness, for example. Then you're going to have 100%. different results. Level up. It's, in, it's interesting you say that. I mean, p- people are. Uh... Like this gal, we go back to the gal that posted the thing that got the 300 plus comments and is still being commented on, by the way. And this was yesterday that she posted. It's amazing, the response. Um, but you've got to level up to a new playing field. I've got this saying that's a new, new levels, new devils, or new heights, new frights. Whenever you do that in business, you've got to level up how you see yourself. Otherwise, you're going to always feel like you're chasing. So, for example, the young man that just finally quit his job four months into it, he's just now getting started. He needs to level up in order to get the six figures. Well, what happens when you get to six figures? Different choices, more choices, more expensive choices. It's a different playing field. What happens when you get to seven figures? Same thing. Different problems, new levels, new devils. All of that requires new identities. But most people's approach to it, James, is that once they get to that point, they think it's all the limiting beliefs. Once they get to that point, they think it's because they're not good enough, not this and that. And so they start chasing rabbit holes, invisible rabbits down endless rabbit holes is what I call it, because they will never be to the, to the bottom of their limiting beliefs. So if, to simplify it all, even with this lady and her Facebook thread, firstly, it's a choice whether you want to be on Facebook at all. Uh, and I certainly choose not to be there very often just because – we expose ourselves to everyone else's opinion and most of them aren't qualified to direct me in my life. I've, that's a choice I've made. Uh, secondly, she could choose to apply a mental model to the answers. She could use an 80-20 principle. She could use a qualification methodology to work out of the people who commented, are uh, any of them qualified to answer her, uh, if, if any? And then of the people who are which ones does she want to place some weight in or none whatsoever just, just to reduce the overwhelm? And for someone like her, you could use a metaphor of a library. She might say what's a good book to read and everyone might have their opinion, but generally you're going to pick one. <laughs> you might use a review system. You might ask a recommendation from the person with insider knowledge like the librarian. You pick the one and walk out of there and leave the rest and you, you know you can go back any time. So here's how, here's how simple it gets for her. This is what I would do in her case. If she were to talk mm-hmm. to me, I would point her directly at the person that she really wants to be and show her how to make that choice. And all this limiting stuff will just melt, period. And then I would push her on her way because she would be just fine on her own versus pointing her towards her limiting beliefs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which who knows how many rabbit holes that will... It's so close to... Bring her to. The advice I've given to people is I just say, listen, the only tool that, that's useful here is just a mirror. Pull up a mirror, stare into it. That's right. Have a look at the person staring back at you. That's the person who's responsible for everything that's going to happen. And you can basically have a conversation with yourself. And I think that's probably my way of saying you can choose. You know how scared people are of doing that, James? Oh, the, I think, well, you know, like I learned with that mechanic, a lot of people have... A, they don't realize they can make a choice and B, they don't have the the courage or the self-honesty to have that conversation. It's much easier to hide. It's easier to be busy on Facebook or to avoid, you know, confronting the reality. And I, I know guys like Dan Sullivan talk about the fact that if you can be more honest with yourself, you're going to get better results as an entrepreneur. He talks about the four C's, you know, the commitment, courage um, that builds confidence and then gives you capability. I think that's a nice framework. But another question that I ask people when they're struggling is a simple question. It's what result do you want? And it sounds a lot like what you would have said to that Facebook lady, like who do you want to be? And you're just directing her back to the start of that hierarchy, the choice part. Who do you want to be? If you want to be that person, you can choose to be that person from now and move forward. Is that really the action step from this podcast? Yeah. I mean, that's that's you choose to be that person. So once you make that choice on an identity level, which coincidentally enough, I'll show you guys how to do coming up, 
once you make that choice on identity level, all this stuff, you get to write your own script. And you create in your own life that force that we talked about, which is your desire to remain consistent with how you see yourself. That is what is your vehicle that you hop in and you go. Limiting beliefs don't matter at that point because you're going. This is great. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a net around this whole episode and, and wrap it up. We, we've talked about that people often come up against something that they identify as a limiting belief, um, but that's really the symptom. It's not the cause, and it's because they've not mm -hmm. got a better way of thinking about it. And we talked about the idea of this hierarchy that – your choices drive your identity and the identity drives your thoughts, which drives your beliefs, which gets your actions, and then you end up with a result. So if you go back to the, the root of that, the choice, it's the fact that we are wanting to be consistent with how we see ourselves. So therefore, we should make a choice about how we'd like to see ourselves and then do everything consistent with that. Am I on the right track? You're a very good listener, James. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so... What we want to do is we take the whole interesting thing here. I'm sure as we've been talking, our listener will have been thinking through and how this applies to themselves because that's what we do. We, we reflect on everything. We, we selfishly insert ourselves into the conversation out of our survival mechanism. We think, does this apply to me or not? And I'm imagining there's someone who might be a little bit down on finances, a little bit overworked, a little bit overwhelmed, got a lot going on. They might be in a place where they feel like this could be out of reach, but I think the the metaphor that comes to mind is no matter how dark a room, even a tiny little candle can defeat darkness. So the tiny little candle we're offering here, with Seth's fantastic miracle cure, is to go back to the choice. Just have a look at the choices. Have a look at <laughs> even have a look at the choices you've made to date and see how that might have got you what you've got and where you're at. And if you decide to make different choices from now, you can interrupt the the pro projection of your life in a dramatic way. As Seth was saying, it doesn't have to be just a little bit of an increment. It could be a ten x. It could be a hundred x. Because tomorrow is a brand new day and you can start with new choices, whether that's small choices around uh, changing the way that you move or eat or the communications you have with people or how you want to interact with social media or whose email list you're going to sign up on or which product you'd like to create. You can choose to be whoever you want. Absolutely right. We have far more control over ourselves than we give ourselves credit for. And sometimes that's intimidating, but you need to stop and realize that nobody's taking your choices from you. And that's the very thing that creates and destroys in your life because all you are is a pile of your own choices. I love period. that quote. You're a pile of your own choices. Seth, you're going to come along to Superfast Business Live and you are going to offer a three-step system to make any choice you want. Is that right? Um, I'll go one better than that. So let's say that you come to Super Fast Business Live and you've got this thing, this change you want to make, this thing you want to install, this thing you want to do. Um, I've got this principle called breakthrough momentum, which I'll explain there. And I'll give you the three steps to make any choice you want, but put it on a level of identity that does what we talked about that changes everything else. It rewrites the script. It reprograms the mechanism so that... Let's say that your morning routine is something you struggle with. You really know what you want to do, but you just can't get yourself to do it. Make it that easy. There's three re really, really, really simple steps that I can't wait to share with you. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. That's why I asked you to present at the event because I am certainly a strong believer in the concept that most of what we're doing online in, in our business and in life is just – it's all mindset. It's so mindset driven. 100%. I was convinced of that from the first time I listened to Maxwell Maltz in the psych psycho cybernetics. Psycho cybernetics. You know, with this, this idea that we're goal seeking devices that we can visualize good outcomes in advance. It's, it's so fits with what you're talking about. I'm very grateful that you came along to share these ideas. And I know we've wandered around a little bit on this particular episode. 
and it's not as easy to define as a A B split test or some of the other technological subjects we cover. However, I think it, in terms of waiting, it's by far more important. So, thank you, Seth, for sharing with us. Absolutely welcome. I, I believe, James, that this the crux of this issue, the guts of it, is the very most important thing that we could ever pay attention to and do for ourselves. Is give ourselves the freedom to make choices on a new level. And as you said in the beginning, you you do this because you care, and I think that is. Um, that's being a good human. You as well, my friend. You're a good man. Appreciate that. Discover how to build your business super fast. Check out superfastbusiness.com. Thank you.